Hey guys, so today I'm here with the Degan 38 9500 pound winch with the black synthetic line fitting all year Wranglers. So you can have all the mods in the world when you're out on the trail, but when you're stuck, you're stuck, and a winch is gonna be that perfect recovery tool to get you out of any sticky situation if you got yourself into that situation on the trail. And this option by Deegan38 is going to be a solid setup to do so and a great choice to take a look at. So you have a couple of different choices when you're looking at winches, but the main two choices are gonna be your low capacity or your pulling capacity, and it's also gonna come down with which line that you want, whether you want steel cable or synthetic line. So starting off with that pulling capacity, Capacity, the general rule of thumb is to choose a pulling capacity that is one and a half times the loaded weight of your Wrangler. So this option by Deacon 38 with the 9,500 pound pulling capacity is gonna be perfect for those lighter Wranglers or even Wranglers with a moderate amount of armor. So as you can tell, we have a front bumper on here. We also have rock sliders and a rear bumper and tire carrier. And this setup is gonna work perfectly with this winch and get us out of any sticky situation that we may get ourselves into. Now, if you are carrying a lot more load on your Wrangler, if you have all that armor or even more armor than we have here, and you're carrying stuff in your cargo area or you have a roof rack with stuff on it, you may wanna take a look into higher pulling capacities, but overall this is going to work best with a lighter Wrangler or a moderately armored Wrangler. Now the other choice is between steel cable and synthetic line. Now steel cable is going to be your most cost-effective choice when choosing a line. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance. However, it does store energy under load. So you wanna be very careful when uh, operating a steel cable line. You wanna make sure you get a damper for it. However, on the other hand, synthetic is not gonna store energy under load. So if it does break, it's not going to lash back like a steel cable would, and it would just drop to the ground, making it a safer choice when winching. Now, the only two drawbacks with synthetic line is gonna be a little bit more expensive, and it's also gonna require a little bit more maintenance. So for this, you would definitely wanna get a cover for it to make sure that the synthetic line is protected from any dirt or any uh, harmful UV rays from the sun. However, I think that trade-off between safety and a little bit more maintenance and a little bit more uh, money is going to definitely be fair. Now overall, I think this is a pretty solid winch. It does have a powerful motor that's going to get you out of any sticky situation like I said before, but it also comes with two options for a wireless and a wired remote. So in the box, you are going to get a wireless receiver that you can plug into the control box. You're going to get a battery and you're able to utilize that wireless feature and stand a safe distance away from your winch while you're winching. However, if you're out on the trail, that battery dies, you have that backup wire there, and I do like that it gives you a couple of options when you are winching and you're out and about and you need to use your recovery tools. So with all that being said, this is going to be roughly $550, making this a pretty averagely priced option for a winch on the page. And I think that's pretty fair with what this winch brings to the table. Now, when looking at all the winches collectively, uh, you can tell that a lot more are cost effective and there's a bunch on the page that are also a lot more expensive. Those more cost effective choices are usually going to not have all the bells and whistles that may, this may come with like the wireless receiver as well as the wired option you get both of those choices in this package it may come with a steel cable line instead of a synthetic rope like this one has or it just may have a lesser pulling capacity now on the other hand it's going to be the exact opposite so other more expensive choices are usually going to uh, come with more bells and whistles uh, they may come with a higher pulling capacity they may come with uh, waterproof parts like an amphibious motor so those are just going going to jump up that price point for all of the extra features that they come with. Overall, I think this is a very solid option. It comes with a lot of features that a lot of people may look for, even though it is a little bit more expensive than some of those cost-effective choices. I definitely think that trade-off is fair and $550 for something that is going to get you out of a sticky situation on the trail, I think it's definitely worth it. So install is gonna be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. This will require a little bit of wiring up to your battery um, and a little bit of assembly. However, it's nothing you can't get done with a couple of basic hand tools. So speaking of that install, let's jump into it now. The tools that I used for my install were a pair of needle nose pliers, a 17 millimeter open-ended wrench, a 3 8 inch drive and quarter inch drive ratchet, a 16 millimeter swivel socket, a 14 millimeter deep socket, a 10 millimeter deep socket, a 5 inch extension, a Phillips head screwdriver, and an impact wrench. 
So before we go ahead and mount up our winch on our front bumper, I did want to first of all tell you guys a little bit more about this, but we do have to mount up our control box as well. So right off the bat, you can tell that this is a very aggressive looking winch. You do get a black synthetic rope and that's going to match with really any other color scheme that you have going on on your Wrangler. I do like that it is a neutral color. It will match with really anything. We also have this textured black powder coat finish, which is going to protect that metal underneath from any rust or corrosion. And it's also going to give a more aggressive look to the uh, whole aesthetic that you have uh, going on with your Wrangler. So this is going to match with really any other textured armor. The textured front bumper that you may be putting it on, this is going to create a really aggressive and stealthy look to the front end of your Wrangler. Now, not only is it just going to look good, but it's also going to function very good as well. Uh, you do have a synthetic rope, which is a lot safer than steel cable or a steel line because it does not store energy under load. Now, you will have to maintenance it a little bit more, but I think that trade-off is very fair um, and is a pretty good trade-off considering this is a very safe option as far as line goes for a winch. Now, this is also just going to be overall very strong. It has a 5.5 horsepower rating and this also has a three-stage planetary gear system with a gear ratio of 195 to 4 to 1. So this will without a doubt get you out of any sticky situation that you may get into. Now there are also a bunch of other things that come with this winch. You get a tow hook, you also do get an aluminum fair lead and a wireless remote that can be wired into the control box as well. So we'll get to that in a second, but first we have to mount up our control box. You're going to have two Phillips head screws. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and we will mount that to the top of here and then connect our leads in just a second. So in the back of the winch where we're going to mount up our control box, there's two holes that are threaded. So we're going to pop the back of our control box on and make sure that that front is wedged within the front of that bar. So I'm going to get them started and then when we tighten it down, um, then I'm going to make sure that everything is lining up at the front there. All right, so you just want to get that threaded in, make sure that's not going anywhere. Same with the other side. sure that this is wedged into place. So you're just going to hold it up where that edge is. There's going to be a little channel on the front where the two tabs are going to sit in. And once you tighten this down, they will sit in place. All right, so now they're tightened in there, we can hook up our leads. So now we can start hooking up our leads. Now the color-coded ones, the red, the black, and the yellow, are going to be our short leads, and they're gonna be color-coded. So black to black, red to red, yellow to yellow. And then for this fourth one down here, that's gonna be our ground. So our other wire that we're gonna be hooking up to the battery is gonna go there, and the ground for our control box is gonna go there. So make sure that the black short lead is going to go on this one up at the front. So we're gonna have two flat washers and a nut. We're gonna place our lead down, flat washer, and then that nut. Then we can take our 14 millimeter socket and a ratchet and just tighten that down. Now you wanna make sure that you don't over torque these because you can damage the stud if you do. Just make sure that that's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere and we can slide our cover over. Also make sure you have enough room to slide that cover over. And the same for the other leads, so I'm gonna go to the red. And for the last one, we do have a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. So we're gonna start with our ground. 
And then we're gonna take our battery lead and attach that as well. Then it goes flat washer, lock washer, and then the nut. And then tighten it down with that same 14. All right, so now that that's put together, we can mount it up to our Jeep. So before we mount up our winch, since this is indented on this specific bumper, um, I am going to install our fair lead first. I want to make sure that we can access this uh, and when the winch is on there, I'm not sure if we will be able to, but you're going to take your provided hardware. It's going to be your bolt, flat washer, lock washer, and nut. We're going to take that bolt, stick it through our fair lead and through our bumper. Secure it down on the other side. Just want to get this threaded for now and then we can worry about the other side. All right, that's on, then we can grab our other bolt. So once those are threaded in, you can take a 17 millimeter wrench for the nut side and a 16 millimeter socket for the bolt side, and we can tighten those down. So on each one of the mounting corners, you're gonna have four total. You are going to have a square bolt that is going to be captured in each post. So what you want to do is just plop that in there on each of the four corners, and then we can go ahead and place our winch down into our winch plate. So after those are in there, we can put our winch in place. We want to make sure that this hook in the front is going through our fair lead. If you need to free spool it, you can open up that clutch. Just want to get it through down and then position this to be mounted up. So you may have to mess around with it a little bit. The wires in the back are very thick, so they're gonna push up against the grill. So if you have to wiggle it around a little bit, that is common. And then what we can do at this point is go underneath of our bumper and secure it down with our bolts. So now that we're underneath the Jeep on the bottom of your winch plate, the winch should align up with those standard holes. What I'm gonna do now is take our provided bolt, the lock washer and the flat washer, and thread that through the winch plate, through the post in the winch into that captured nut, and just thread that in and snug it up. Now we wanna make sure that we don't tighten it down just yet. We wanna get all of the bolts in before we tighten it down. So we have two on the right side right now, and then we'll thread in the other two on the left side. So now we can tighten those down since all four are in. I'm gonna be using a 16 millimeter swivel socket just so I can reach um, everything and then I'm using an extension as well a five inch extension and a hand ratchet to tighten those down all right now same thing for the other side So what I did was routed these two wires that were going to connect to our battery terminals behind the grill in the inner fender liner and up through near our air box here. So what I'm gonna do is attach them to our battery terminals. I have a 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to take off the one accessory nut. Connect our power first. Then we can connect our negative. Then we can attach our negative lead if it wants to be phased.
Tighten that down with the 10 millimeter socket. And then we can move back to the front to attach our hook. So one of our last steps is to mount up our hook. Now you are gonna need a pair of needle nose pliers and we can get this cotter pin out of our pin here that's going to attach our rope to our hook. Then what we can do is just put that pin back in place. And there it goes. And then what you wanna do is take the pair of needle nose pliers and just bend a part of the cotter pin. This just is going to ensure that this middle pin is not gonna come out. So after that is on, we can hook it to a D-ring. Um, now this is going to be in free spool. If you need to spool it out, mine is spooled okay. So the clutch is just in neutral there. Not engaged and not free spooling. And then we can hook it onto our D-ring and we can spool that in so there's no extra slack and then you're all set to go. So before we go ahead and wrap up this video, I did wanna show you guys how to operate your winch. Now you get two options with your remote controller. Uh, you have a wireless option that comes with a receiver box and a small battery, and you also have a wired option with a long lead so you can stand at a safe distance away from your winch when you're operating it. Now this is perfect if your battery dies while you're out on the trail, you always have a backup, but I'm gonna show you guys how to plug this in in just a second. So in order to use the wireless feature of the remote, you wanna make sure that your battery is installed in this little compartment here. You wanna take your receiver, pop off the cover on the side of your control box, put that aside. There's gonna be an arrow uh, just marking that that's gonna be the top. And what I do like about this is since you have your leads here, you can actually like move this around and position that out of the way of your wires. But once that receiver is in there, you're gonna have this blue wireless switch button. You're gonna press that down. Once you hear it click, it will turn on and it will illuminate the wireless uh, label here. So once that's on, you can uh, flip this switch for out and in. I have it kind of spooled out. You wanna make sure that your clutch handle is engaged, then we can spool it in. And then same goes for the uh, wired option. So if we take this out, we grab our wire. This is going to connect right at the bottom. There's going to be a little uh, insert where you line that up. You're going to have a little jam nut to make sure that this stays on. Snug that up. Then you can plug the other side to your control box. This is going to have the same arrow as that receiver. Make sure that's facing upright. And now it's going to illuminate the wired option. So then you can do the same thing, out and in. That's going to wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe. And for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.